Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books I read for Lamentable Library, which is a gothic fiction book club that was a partnership between Kelly and I. Kelly originally created Lamentable Library to read more gothic books because that is very much our vibe. I then got invited to join a couple of years ago and over those two years I have read so many more gothic books and this has been a great excuse to try gothic books that were slightly more out of my comfort zone. And I have ranked them, I have core piled them and I have given them ratings and some of them have definitely come out better than others. Now, because Kelly has an actual job and she also lives a thousand miles away from me in a completely different time zone, organising live shows has been really difficult and we've not really had any lives since I think maybe March or March of last year. <laughs> like it's been a while. But we're hoping that in 2023 we can bring something back to you that is a bit more consistent so that you can get your monthly fix of gothic fiction with us. So I will explain more about that at the end so make sure to stick around. First and foremost I'm going to start with the books that I absolutely hated but tried because of Lamentable Library. First book I want to talk about and the lowest rated was Girl in the Walls by... <laughs> I can't remember the name of the author. I, I unhauled this book so quick. It scored 18 out of 70 for Core Pile for me, which means that it was a two stars. I did manage to finish it. I only tend to give one star ratings to books that I didn't finish. But this fucking book, I can't remember. I think this was one of the ones where it was like a mutual pick between Kelly and I. So there's no one really to blame for this. But I got really excited when we first picked this one because this is about a young girl who lives in the walls of this old house and a family moves in and they start to realise that she's there and she gets caught by one of the sons and her her, her kind of sanctuary that she's created in these walls is disrupted and it sounded like a really cool premise we were really excited for it and I was able to get signed editions in so it was the first book that we had for a giveaway for Waypoint and as a giveaway for Lamentable Library. It was so shit. <laughs> it was so shit. So I was really really disappointed. The premise like I said sounded really exciting, sounded like a really great mix of stuff but at no point do you know for sure if this girl exists or if she is the ghost of someone, if she's the ghost of someone that used to live there, all of her family has moved away. And one thing that is really clear is that this girl is incredibly traumatized, that she has been living in the walls because she's not had the best time um, and that she's lost family along the way, etc. So the whole time reading this book, Kelly and I were convinced this girl was going to be a ghost. And don't get me wrong, with certain books like Horrid, which I will get to later, The Murder of Graham Catton, that mixture of is it real, is it isn't, is usually a trope that I adore. But in this, I just found it aggravating, especially when it turned out it wasn't supernatural at all. She was was legit just a small child living in the walls who'd then become friends with her neighbour and it was just uh, it was a whole thing and I found it so jarring and I get that it was based on a news article where this little old lady had been living in her house for like 20 years and they found out that a man had been living in the walls at the same time like creepy as shit but this book just wasn't scary and then at this point a man rocks up because one of the boys has decided that he needs like he's definitely got someone living in the walls and he starts looking at like internet forums about it and the, this man rocks up and starts like hunting her down and it becomes very, do you know what, it's so stupid. It's so stupid because I've worked out now in this moment, in this very moment, why I didn't like it. And that is because this book had the same plot as that mousetrap film. You know the one where it's the two brothers that take on the house and they renovate the house and they are constantly trying to chase this one mouse who's just trying to live their life. Yet somehow, that film had more heart and soul than this book could even dream of having. So yeah, of all the Lamentable Library books that we read, it's the one I hated the most, statistically. I feel like I had more passion for another one, which I will get to in a sec, but this is the one that I really just, there was nothing redeeming about it. I didn't enjoy it. I stuck it out purely because it was a Lamentable Library book and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Next on my shit list is Tall Bones. Tall Bones scored 24 out of 70 and therefore also got two stars. And it was one of those ones where when I read it initially, I was caught up in it, it was great. And then the more I discussed it, the more angry it made me. There were a lot of things that like my white privilege and being a cishet woman made me kind of blind to in upon initial reading, which then made me more angry. But I was also particularly disappointed because this author <laughs> did the same course I did um, at the same university. And I got really excited about like experiencing books by people that had done that course. And 
essentially tall bones was about a small rural town where a girl goes missing and the town kind of turns upon itself trying to find out who did it but rather than focus on their own flaws which everybody has they focus on the gay traveler instead and it's really really brutal the way that everyone kind of just kind of like turns on them and it was a live show that i did with kelly and becca from becca with the books listening to the two of them like tear it apart i was like oh my god this book is awful and i was so disappointed in myself that upon reading it i hadn't had any of those like critical thoughts and then i was like no they're absolutely correct like thinking about these things and the more i was thinking about it the lower the rating got and i was like i think i was just caught up in the drama of it all but it was so problematic like there were so many things that i just really it was incredibly homophobic it very much centralized a toxic christian belief system that kind of justified a whole bunch of shit which is very gothic but was just not what i wanted in this at all it was incredibly problematic there were trigger warnings left right and center for domestic abuse sexual abuse there was one character that i thought was going to redeem themselves by the end and they just didn't and i didn't mind that they were really unlikable characters but as a, as a narrative it just didn't fucking work and it was one of those ones where again i just didn't feel like i could recommend it to anybody really didn't enjoy it but had got caught up in the drama initially and I think also because I did it as an audiobook, I think that probably meant that I skipped stuff mentally that was problematic, that then upon discussion and reflection was not a good time. So yeah, tall bones on the shit list. The final two star rating for Lamentable Library was an interview with a vampire. Now I know this is a cult favourite for a lot of people, especially those who really enjoy vampire mythology. It was one of the first books that really looked at empathy. What happens to a vampire when they lose their humanity? It's also hella gay. I get that. It's also very emotionally driven. The structure of this thing made me hate it. It made me hate it. There were no chapters. The writing was super tiny. Even as an audiobook, listening to it in that interview style, I found it physically exhausting to get through. And I'm really excited to see the TV series, which I haven't got to yet, but it looks incredible because I feel like it really brings out the heart and soul of what it is that people enjoy about this without it being the really melodramatic sad vamps being sad all the time oh my god louis just shut up like he was so melodramatic and he's like she's choosing on the stat for being this like melodramatic wannabe aristocrat but even before louis became a vampire he was a wet drip <laughs> like he just becomes more of a wet drip later and i felt so sorry for claudia who is this hundred year old woman trapped in a 13 year old's body like it was so sad and the way they like sexualized her regardless of the fact that she was a literal child because she, men mentally she was an adult was just so bizarre and really jarring because at some points they saw her as their daughter at other points they saw her as their their missus it was so weird it was so bizarre and i i hated it i really didn't enjoy it i found it an absolute slog and it was one of the ones where i was not looking forward to us doing a live show about it because i know that so many people really like it and it's such a foundation book for so many vampire books that have come after right i just really didn't like it i really didn't like it and i again have removed it from waypoint it is not a book that i feel comfortable recommending there are so many great vampire books out there and i feel like to me an interview with a vampire will be the same way that i see brave new world I read Brave New World and it was interesting to see how many dystopic sci-fis have kind of taken that mythos and run with it. And it's really interesting to see with Interview of a Vampire, the mythology that's built up in that, that people have then run with. Would I recommend it? No. I will recommend the books that are kind of taking from that mythos. Prime example, Mina and the Undead. It's a really fun vampire novel. I would happily recommend that over Interview with a Vampire because it's it's just a more fun read it's structured nicer, the characters are great, and I just feel like Interview with the Vampire was just... I hated it. I just... I just didn't like it. And I can sit here and rationalise why I didn't like it, but the TLDR is I didn't enjoy it and I won't recommend it. 
Next is The Familiars. Now this was the first book that I got invited on for Lamentable Library and it was also the first live show I did and this is a historical fiction novel about a young woman who is desperate to have a baby but she has been told by her doctor that if she tries to get pregnant she will die and she has been trying with all these different midwives to help her but every time her baby she ends up miscarrying etc and it's really it is really sad and then she finds this woman who might be a witch and this woman helps her get pregnant and helps her once she is pregnant and protects her and the baby and when some witch trials start kicking up nearby her midwife gets caught up in it now she is a woman of standing so she can help but only to a certain extent and it is very much a story of female empowerment like the historical implications of standing up for yourself which i really enjoyed i enjoyed the kind of era of it i like this was an inherently very feminist novel the men when they do speak are oh, dickheads but I feel like at every point the main character knows that she acknowledges that and she does something she can whatever she can to fight against that system which I really appreciate like if you're going to do something that's historically accurate I'd at least like the characters to have modern day views because and every time I see internalized misogyny in historical books it just upsets me so I really really enjoyed that I thought the pacing of this was really nice and really fun there were just a couple of things where it felt really neat or it felt overdone or it just felt like it had been handed to me which is why I got three stars not four but this is one that I would recommend I have got a couple more Stacey Hall's books on my shelves I've got The Foundling and Mrs England which I'm really excited to get to so yeah so this was the first one where I was like oh yeah this is definitely a vibe and it was one of those ones where because it's historical gothic and it has witches set in a more historical setting I really liked that there's an element of supernatural you're not entirely sure if magic is real or not or if it's just that these women were too outspoken or their husbands got angry at them or whatever it was that then ends up landing them in this witch's jail it's very very sad but like I said before there are trigger warnings for this one for um, miscarriage and general like pregnancy issues there is a, a lot of abuse domestic domestic abuse and um, emotional abuse there is a young girl who has been abused and then is abusing others um, there's a whole bunch of things going on that make this could make this difficult for readers um, but I think it's a worthwhile book and I hope you try I hope you pick it up because it was a good time next is House of Hollow now I read this for a start to finish sprints um, and it was one of the last ones that I did for Gothtober I have been putting this book off for 100 years <laughs> because even before Lamentable Library people were telling me that I would absolutely adore this book and I just didn't want to pick it up because I was so worried that the hype was so great that I wouldn't actually enjoy it by the time that I got to it that was my big fear however it was so, so worth the wait. It was a groom's fairy tale meets modern London. It had emotion, it had atmosphere, and it had so much tension. There's always something going on. And I would absolutely recommend this for fans of Horrid, for the Hazelwoods. So basically in this, there are three sisters who went missing when they were seven years old and then came back a month later. And there's a lot of kind of um, mythos around them about why they went missing, how they were found, etc. And then 10 years later, one of them goes missing again. And this man in a skull mask is chasing them down. Like I said, it was very atmospheric. It was a good time. It's a very, very short read. So if you're ever looking for like an intro to gothic book, this would be a great one because it's a fairy tale gothic. It very much has those gothic vibes, but then it's based on fairy tales that are kind of specific to this narrative. It has ghosts and monsters and things like that. It also has emotional trauma, which we adore. And like, it was just it was really fun and I'm so sorry to everybody who kept recommending me this book and I just didn't get to it because I should have I should have got to it sooner it was a good time and it was four stars for me the only reason it lost the star is probably because of how short it was it felt really rushed it felt like a lot was happening when it could have taken a moment to breathe etc and the plot twist was a bit jarring that's not to say it's a bad book really really enjoyed it would absolutely recommend I am really surprised that The Library of the Unwritten hasn't come out higher in the rankings because The Library of the Unwritten is one of the books that I have picked up specifically Lamentable Library for Lamentable Library that I keep recommending to people because it is such a good 
time. So if you enjoyed Good Omens and you like that kind of banter between angels and demons and you like a found family type vibe and you like the settings of hell and you like the idea of a library full of books that never got written, that always wished they could be written, that is full of mischief and magic and banter and pansexual main character librarians and muses who can give magic and inspire people uh, but are selfish and keep it for themselves, all of that, all of that great stuff is packed into this first book book which is the first of a trilogy and it will lure you into a full sense of security where you think oh these characters are really fun this can't hurt me and then it will make you cry out of nowhere and it's just it's so clever and it's so well crafted and it looks at a whole bunch of different mythologies it's not just angels and demons in the christian sense there's egyptian mythology there's norse vikings the angels are very kind of castiel from supernatural like which i really appreciated and it's it's perfect for neil gaiman fans but i think it's better than neil gaiman's book which again i feel like much like with the interview with the vampire thing i'm probably gonna upset some people with that statement but i will stand by it i love 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 this series and i keep forcing people to read it more people need to read it i have noticed that i think it came out in a box recently because people are starting to pick it up book talk seems to be noticing it now and it's so worth it like i'm so glad this little insular book that lamentable library picked up months ago it's finally getting the audience it deserves next is the mercies which is another historical fiction novel about witches and this one is set in norway a group of women lose or an entire town of women lose their husbands in a bad storm one night and basically spend six months fending for themselves and when the government kind of hears of this this group of women that are looking after themselves they don't like that so they send a kind of witch hunter slash um priest dude to kind of rock up to this village and kind of get them back on the straight and narrow of being subordinate women and they're not really keen on doing that and unfortunately it ends up sparking a witch hunt um, and in the meantime we've got two perspectives one of the wife of this priest and one of someone who has lost her husband before she was able to marry him so it's kind of stuck between uh, being almost a wife and almost kind of sympathized with and not being that so it's a really interesting mix it has a sapphic relationship in it and much like the familiar it really looks at witches in a more true to history type way. Kieran Millwood Hargraves is a BIPOC author and therefore this is full of BIPOC characters. It is an incredibly feminist powerful novel but it is very very historically written. It's definitely more on the historical side than gothic. I don't know that I would recommend it as like the first to try of Kieran Millwood Hargraves because I started with her middle grades then I tried her YA The, the Deathless Girls which I adored and this is her, her debut adult novel. Um, this is actually the proof copy that I got from a charity shop so love that for me but it was a really interesting powerful novel but I feel like you definitely have to be more in the mindset of wanting either specifically a witch novel or specifically wanting a historical novel because it doesn't really balance itself between the two very well it spends a lot of time being one thing and then the other and also it's not a very gentle first try in either genre I don't think but if you enjoy the genre and you want something that's really really going to hit you in the feels this was a few points of getting a five star and I think that again was down to pacing it was a very slow burn read and I just kind of wanted some of the sapphic elements to happen sooner the ending is really really sad but I think it was so perfectly crafted Kieran Millwood Hargraves is an auto by author for me hands down and would absolutely recommend the Lost Ones is a testament to not judging a book by its cover because this this is the paperback cover it's gross isn't it now had i known that this is what the hardback cover looked like i would have been all over that shit this one was one of kelly's picks and this is another historical novel but it's a historical ghost story set during the first world war the main character was a nurse during the first world war and her husband was a soldier however she working on the front lines did not realize that one of the men that died in her lap was her husband until it was too late and there was nothing she could do for him so through that trauma she then goes through a mental health spiral and she tries to commit suicide she is saved and she is kind of helped by her sister and kind of coached back to some kind of mental health relative to where she was before but she is constantly mourning her husband she still lives in mourning for her husband when her sister later falls pregnant, her sister believes that someone is trying to kill the baby, that someone is trying to hurt her. So she feels that she has to go and help her sister because her sister did so much to help her. And 
whilst she fears that they might both be deemed hysterical and put in, a, in an asylum, she very much wants to protect her sister to the best of her ability. Equally, a man is invited by her sister's husband to prove that these are not ghosts, that, that this is all in her head, and wants to do it gently, again, so that she doesn't land in an asylum, because that is what the elders want. They just want to put them away, put these hysterical women away, and not worry about it anymore. And they are both very aware that that is a real possibility, and it is a real threat the whole way through this, which I really appreciated that level of care, not only with the atmosphere, but that there were real stakes in this novel. Ghost story, ghost hunting, are the ghosts real? Are it in, is it in their head? I thought it was a really fun balance of paranormal, supernatural and mental health, which as I said with the previous books, they just didn't match it and certainly not in this way. I thought it was a really clever balance. If you enjoy like an Agatha Christie mystery, but you also want a level of supernatural and gothic, I would absolutely recommend this one to you. It is so clever. It's so slow burn but it works and the characters I love an amateur detective I love an amateur detective so the fact that this woman who very much believes a ghost could be real is working with a man who absolutely does not believe ghosts could be real but they form this camaraderie together is just so wholesome it's so wholesome and lovely and I thought that the way their relationship kind of blossoms they very much go from like friends to considering seeing each other as something more towards the end and once they've kind of fully formed opinions on each other I just thought that was really lovely but they're still very independent people that are dealing with their own stuff so it also has disability rep because one of the main characters is using a cane he is missing a leg um, and I thought that was really interesting as well because he is also dealing with his own trauma of what he has lost in this war now, I am not a fan of war fiction. I do not like reading about the First or Second World War. However, when it comes to stories about those at home, it is a really interesting timeline to look at, especially as like an era full of hysterical women who were, were not hysterical. They were trying to defend their country as strongly as the men were. So it's a really interesting one where depending on perspective, they very much see things differently. I thought that was really, really interesting. And I would absolutely recommend this one if you can ignore the cover. The hardback, oops, the hardback is available via Waypoint if you can't ignore the cover, I totally understand. <laughs> and finally, we get to my two five stars. Now, both of these books scored exactly the same, so I could have done them in any particular order, but I wanna talk about this one first. I struggle to recommend this one more, for reasons that I will go into, but that is Flowers in the Attic. Another hideous cover, but that is not why I struggle to recommend this one. This is a true gothic novel, the likes of which, the likes of Rebecca and books like that, where they are cult classic gothic novels. This is about a family that are living in like the, between like the 30s and 60s. I can't work out what it is. I know it says, but I cannot remember off the top of my head. But basically they are the perfect family. You have a beautiful wife, an intelligent husband, and these four beautiful children. The eldest son wants to be a doctor like his father. The eldest daughter who is two years younger than him wants to be a ballerina and is beautiful and graceful. And then there are these two gorgeous twins who are just really creative and fun. And they live the perfect life until however, one day their father does not come home and they find out that he has died in a car accident and their entire life falls apart. Their mother does not work, she doesn't want to work, she doesn't know how to work, she has to find a way to provide for her family. So what she does is she crawls back to her parents who did not want her to get married or have kids in the first place. Now at the time we don't find out why, that kind of unfolds later in the story, but you very much find out that these kids are going to be locked up in an attic until this mother can and convince her father to put her back in the will and protect her family. Now, it is incredibly sad. It is so, so sad. And it is riddled with not only domestic abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. There are moments where these child children are beaten, where they are forced into close proximity with each other. Um, and it's, it's cruel. It's a really cruel book but it's so powerful and so well written. I read this initially when I was 14 years old and that was traumatizing because this book was recommended to me by my mother and I don't know if she was like threatening me or if she just knew that I was a twisted shit and would really enjoy this. Upon reading it, it was an immediate five stars. It made me cry. It was so, so clever. And I'm trying really hard not to spoil stuff because there are so many plot twists in this that like, because it was a reread for me, I was like, will it hold up? Will it be able to manage to hold on to that atmosphere and that tension upon a second read? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Like even knowing what they were doing, even knowing what was being done to them, it just hurt 
all the more and the main trigger warning that i it will be a spoiler and therefore if you want to skip i absolutely understand but i do feel like it needs saying there is heavy incest in this these children are children of incest and they end up having incest between them as well and there is sexual assault in this so please go in with your eyes wide open because at 14 i did not and i would have appreciated it if my mum had warned me but trigger warnings weren't really a thing then so i completely understand why she didn't but also i feel like i have to and it is why it's one of those books where again if you're a fan of rebecca or very very intense gothic novels I can recommend it but with this long list of caveats. If you want to try it please go in with your eyes wide open and then just enjoy this magical book. If it doesn't sound like your thing I, I don't blame you. That's absolutely fine. I do not blame you at all. So the final book on my rankings for Lamentable Library is Horrors by Katrina Leno, another five star read that I'm happy to recommend to everyone. This is a really fun YA ghost story that also has those Agatha Christie vibes. The main character is obsessed with Agatha Christie and basically her father passes away. So her mother and her return to her mother's hometown and she doesn't know something that the rest of the town does seem to know and they're all kind of walking around her on eggshells and she's not entirely sure why but she very much feels that this house that she's in is haunted and she's not sure what's going on it was a really interesting fast-paced YA novel I liked that it had those mystery elements I like that there were enough of those mystery elements that we could have put the pieces together if we were smart enough I wasn't smart enough for this one like there were certain things where I was like I've put those pieces together but then other things that were like more plot twisty I thought was really well done there were a couple of things that I was like that's incredibly tropey but I really didn't mind if you're looking for like a wintry gloomy foggy ghost story YA or a gentle intro into gothic fiction I would recommend Horrid it was a really good time really fast paced like I said and just yeah I loved it it was such a fun read and I've forced it into people's hands left right and center and they have also loved it so if you don't take my word for it feel free to take someone else's so what is happening to Lamentable Library? Well, as I said at the start of this video, Kelly has a full-time job. She cannot commit to book clubs, but also she is too much of a mood reader. And I completely understand that. I like a plan, I like a list, but I can absolutely understand sometimes the books we choose, they're just not the one. And trying to balance so many different varieties of gothic fiction in one book club is just not possible always. So. I will be doing a mixture of Lamentable Library as it was, where each month we read a gothic novel and then the beginning of the following month we will do a live show for it, and the Luna Book Club pick, which I've been hosting on my website, Waypoint Books. The Luna Book Club pick is a random book each month, usually picked by my Discord, so they will pick a genre and I will then pick a new release for them so they can then buy in. It's not a book club that you have to buy into every month if you don't like the sound of the book. Now, it has meant that we've read a variety of books and some have been better than others and some of them have just been so out of my comfort zone that I don't think I would have picked them up, but I'm really glad that I did. Now we're making it kind of the Lunar Library. It is going to be a case of you will still get a surprise book, but it will always be gothic fiction. And then we will have a live show the following month, the same as Lamentable Library. Now I'm hoping that Kelly will be able to make it to a few of those live shows, but it means that the commitment doesn't necessarily have to be there. If she can't make it, she can't make it. But she wants to be there and that's what matters to me so we will be amalgamating the two waypoint will still be doing a surprise book a month that's nothing to do with the lunar library but the lunar library will be starting as of the 1st of jan so the link to the lunar library book for january will be below for the first month we will be doing a spooky middle grade set in london i'm really excited to try it i've not seen many reviews for it so i'm really really intrigued to see what people think and i thought it would be a gentle way to enter into a new gothic year so if that sounds interesting to you feel free to click the link below and treat yourself to something else from Waypoint because tis the season to treat yourself, right? Like that's how that works. Let me know in the comments down below, are there any books on this list that you absolutely adored or wish that we'd had a full live show for? Um, were there any books on this list that like me, you absolutely hated? Because that's fine too. That's fine too. And it will also help me curate the books for 2023 i want to make sure that we're all having a good time with our gothic fiction so if you just want to let me know that you were here just leave a little ghost leave me a little gothic ghost in the comments down below treat yourself to something from waypoint because it supports me and my content and most importantly have a nice day